I'm live. Oh, got to have the music playing, right? Can you hear the music? Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another very special Thursday Night Live. This is two in a row. We're setting records around here for consistency. My name is Chuck Cassidy. Thank you for tuning in with me. Uh, I'm coming to you live from uh, Wolf Dog Buses here in Northwest Washington State, where Big surprise, it's currently clouding and raining. I can't believe it. After all the sunshine we've been having too, you know? Uh, it's a pretty nice uh, day to be having this because I'm coming to you in front of a bus that we are in the midst of finishing up a rough in on. You might recognize that lovely Toyota tan color here. This is the Chevy Thomas short bus that I did a tour of oh, back in January that we sold. And uh, at the time, our schedules were open enough for us to agree to do some more work on it. But now we're just, I don't know if we could get any busier, but we're almost done with it and about ready to send it on its way. We've got the spray foam done, the electrical rough in done, new RV windows installed. We're going to be putting in the walls and the ceiling, installing the solar system. What else are we doing, Brianna? Some camera systems, I think. And... Um, Oh, a diesel heater and air conditioning and some gray water and fresh water tanks. So pretty good. I wish I could say that we're offering that service to lots of people, but right now we're very booked. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see what we've got going on here in the old. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Um, is everyone seeing? I'm curious on the, uh, yeah, this comment overlay thing. I think I need to get rid of that. You know, I thought it would show comments in the live chat, but uh, geez, I don't think it is. <laughs> or maybe you got a comment on the video. That sounds annoying. So I'm going to get back, get back over here to the YouTubes. Um, hey, everyone, who's going, yeah, who, by the way, who is going to the bus fair in Oregon this June? Do you know about the bus fair? Because if you don't, it's almost like you haven't been watching my channel. I'd be pretty bummed about that. Um, the bus fair is a Obviously, schoolie and bus themed festival. It happens in Oak Ridge, Oregon uh, in June from the 21st to the 23rd. I am putting together a whole day of seminars, uh, educational seminars led by people who are experts at what they do on all things bus related from buying the right bus, how to do mechanical work on buses, how to drive buses, layout tips, electrical, solar. Um, how to live on the road, you know, finding water, campsites, things like that. Um, and then a very special segment called the Pros Corner, where everybody who teaches a seminar is going to basically do a show and tell of something or some tip that they love that they want to share with people. And I mean, that alone could save you thousands of dollars. It would pay for the whole shebang. You know what I'm saying? Check it out, thebusfair.com. Um, if you sign up for the seminars, you get a discount on all the other tickets, uh, the camping, the attendance, all of that stuff. And I think you even get a discount on a second person, uh, you know, if you're a couple or if you got a friend, right? So we'd love to see that. That's my plug for the bus fair. I'm just, it's something that I love. I do it. It's a job of mine and Brock who runs that is a good friend and it's really cool. And I think it's all about what this schooly life is all about. Um, and I know a lot of people in the chat are going to be there. I just saw Brad from Crown and Around. I know he's going to be there. Um, oh, we got Austin in the house. Austin, Austin's been doing some video editing for me. Thanks for being here, Austin. <laughs> um, we got Bus Life Adventure. Oh, there we go. That's Brock. He runs Bus Life Adventure. It's a great Instagram account. And uh, me and Brock go way, way back. Here we go. So... Um, I don't know if I have a whole lot of updates for you. Those are the big ones. I got a new website, chuckcassidy.com. Check it out if you want. From there, you can schedule things like consults for me. You can have me design a solar system, all kinds of stuff. And let me know, uh, you, anyone watching this probably is a fan. Let me know if you find errors or had, have suggestions for the website because this is kind of the beta first round version. And me and a guy named Joel are working on the website and trying to get that all snazzed up. But I don't have time to go into every nook and cranny on that thing. So if anyone wants to look in there and say, hey, Chuck, your you know, link to whatever is broken, 
let me know and you can hit me up. It's info at chuckcassidy.com. Super easy. And I really appreciate the feedback. It helps me a bunch. Um, we're old bus farts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true, Brock. Remember when we were young bus farts? So fresh. Um, oh, look, you can see Brian in the corner. She uh, She's doing work. I think the only way to make her do work is to turn the camera on. <laughs> she's in the middle of installing one of those um, bird's eye, you know, 360 view cameras that, oh, it's done. We might do a little demo of it later. Uh, it's a really cool camera system. You put cameras on all the sides of the vehicle and then through the wizardry of modern computer technology, it stitches those images together. And then on your screen, it gives you like a top down view. It's like you're playing you know, Mario, Mario 64, but it's a bus and you're not Mario, you know? Um, that's how I described it, yeah. I'm getting feedback from her. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here. We got 109 watching, that means a whole lot to me. I'm really trying to keep to doing these every Thursday. It's tough because we're, we're really busy around here and um, you know, when you get into a flow, it's tough to pull away and bust out the camera but I wanna do it for you because I really actually enjoy these and it means a lot to, that you all show up for this. Um, let's go ahead, I'm gonna open it up to the Q&A for a while and then we'll pause that. I owe you a double tool du jour because I didn't do it last week. Ugh, I feel awful about that and lots of you reminded me and I appreciate the accountability. But uh, I've, got, I've got a tool du jour. And then my, for the double tool du jour, the second one, it's not a tool, but it really is something, oh, it's something that I think will make your life a lot easier. And me and Brianna have become big, big believers in that second tool du jour. So maybe I'll, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the first tool du jour now. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Then we'll do the Q&A, then a second tool du jour for the third half of the show. That seems like a really good way to do things. I'm gonna try this new feature um, that the old Apple uh, unveiled, which lets me show you guys what's going on with my phone. Let's see if this works. Is it gonna work? Holy smokes, can everybody see what's coming out of my, look at this is, that's infinity right there. Okay, so we're gonna cruise over here. So. I am someone who does metal fab from time to time, but I don't have a big shop. I also really hate abrasives and abrasive dust and sparks. And so I just picked this up and I'm just chuffed to the gills about it. This is made by H-E-N-M. It is a, it's a metal cutting bandsaw and it's got a really great feature that I love, which is that the head is mitering and about eight years ago, when I first started getting into band saws, there were, not, there were no saws really like this that were this small that also had the mitering feature. And so if you wanted to cut an angle, you actually had to rotate the clamps, the vise that hold the workpiece in, and it was really cumbersome. But we lived with that, we suffered through it. And for a long time, I didn't have a band saw that, that could do miters, um, we used a, uh, a, a cold cut saw, I think is what you'd call it, but essentially it looks just like a chop saw, you know, that you would use for wood, except it's got a steel cutting blade and the blade is a lot slower RPM. I think it's like, I want to say it's somewhere around like 1200 RPM or something, whereas a wood cutting blade, I think is a couple thousand above that. Um, it's a great way to do it. Also no sparks, no abrasive dust, but the danger there is that those blades are expensive as heck. And if you, use the wrong clamping or have improper technique, you break the teeth on those blades. And you can take those blades and send them off and get the teeth repaired and get them sharpened and stuff, but it's expensive and it's a pain in the butt. And it's also loud and it's kind of high drama. And as you all know, I love band saws. So this right here is kind of the same setup, except it's a band saw. Band saw blades, you know, are super duper cheap and they're easy to replace. They're not worth sharpening or even worrying about. I can get a new, a new high quality enough blade, like it's a brand that I like and I have experience and I like the way it performs. A new blade for this saw is about 15 bucks, I think. Um, you can clamp it in, it's mitering, that's really great. And when it's time to cut, you know, you've got the trigger up here. I've got, I've got, my, <laughs> I've got my zip tie on there so I can leave it on. And 
We just go down. I'm not going to, should I make a cut for you? Yeah, everyone wants to see me make a cut, I bet. So let me, let me take this clamp out. This saw, the big drawback of this saw, unfortunately, is that it is rather expensive. Um, this saw was about, uh, I think it was 800 bucks. But I really, I do enough metal work that I was happy to justify buying this. And, you know, if you like, if you like certain things, Oh, did, it, did we lose the camera? No, we're frozen. Oh my gosh. Let me get, let me fix things, guys. Brock, you win. Thanks for the heads up that, uh, that we lost. <laughs> let me, let, I, I wonder if I could just point the camera at that. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, here we go. I think we're reconnected now. Um, this, is, this is what happens when you're running the whole show uh, by yourself. You know, um, do you want to help Brianna? No, Brianna doesn't want to help. It's too bad. Let's try the camera thing again. And I'll, I'll try to make it quicker and I'll make it so that I can see what's happening. There we go. There's my horizontal bandsaw situation. So we're going to make a cut real quick with it. And what's awesome is there's not going to be any sparks and it's quiet. It's much safer in my opinion. It's a lot more controllable than those abrasive style chop saws. They're kind of, those are tough to aim in my experience and get precise cuts. So we're frozen again, but I'm gonna unfreeze it and then we'll just do it again because I think I've got this licked. I really do. I think I've got it figured out. We're gonna get there. It's a you know it's hard to it's hard to do the whole thing yourself sometimes. And I think what it is honestly is that I let the the screen lock turn on. Yeah, I think that's what it is because I bet it's going to start working here. Sorry for the hold up everybody, you know I'm I'm a professional at one thing and it's not this. So, you go ahead and you grab the trigger here and you just bring it down. There you go. And if you take a look, I mean, that is a pretty nice cut. And the cool thing about this is not only is that a nice cut, but that was quiet enough that I was able to talk to you while I was doing it. Here's the cut. Um, I don't know if it'll focus on that. But it's a nice clean cut. And I was able to talk to you while I was doing it. It didn't throw sparks everywhere and it didn't create abrasive dust, which is not good for you or the shop, you know, filling it with dust. So that is my H-E-N-M uh, horizontal mitering bandsaw. I don't have a link to that or anything. Um, there's a lot of models out there. I know Bally has one, uh, Trajan has one, I think Grizzly makes one. What I like about that one, it's got the cast aluminum base. It's a one piece base. And that's really important to me because you stamped steel as a base is floppy and it's not going to be as rigid when you're clamping your piece to it. Um, and I also like, if you notice, it, the, the head, the cutting head can go totally vertical. And they actually sell a table that you can bolt onto it and then use it as a vertical bandsaw for doing like precision cuts. And that's something I'll probably honestly end up buying and do. Uh, but I love bandsaws. I love that one. I'm really stoked on it. So that is, that's the tool du jour that I owed you from the past. Let me get this camera set back up facing. There we go. That's better. I hope you all appreciate that. I don't know if anybody else here is such a fanatic for the freaking bandsaws as I am, but I just, I like them. They're quieter, the blades are cheaper, they're easier to control, they feel safer to me. They're still very dangerous, but that feels a lot safer to me. Um, awesome tool, here we go. So thank you for putting up with the lo-fi production around here. Let's go ahead and uh, open it up. If you got some questions for me, um, bring them in and drop them in the live chat. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button too. I mean, she, I just did it. I just hit the like button. I liked my own video. Um, yeah, I love, I love that freaking 
saw. That is a cool saw. Everyone should have one. <laughs> Feeling quite chuffed about the usage of the word chuffed. I agree. Oh, Robert, hey, thanks for the uh, for the super chat. Uh, appreciate that. I'm just scrolling back up. There's actually been a lot of comments and I missed out on a lot of them. <laughs> But uh, yeah, thanks for the super chat. How am I feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, summer is around the corner. It's come to my attention and Brianna's attention that we have far more work than we can handle, which means we have the potential to make a lot of money, but it also means we're going to have to work really hard and probably have to get some friends up here to help us out. And um, that's kind of fun, right, Brianna? I'm so do, you, do you see her? She's like halfway into the... So... Brianna's a big fan, I'm gonna, sh sh look at this. Brianna's a big fan of putting these clear LEDs, you know, in for the flashers, which uh, truth be told, I've never done before, um, before meeting her. Uh, and we, we installed them on this, being like, oh, we got all kinds of room to run the wires after the fact. And um, turns out that that's actually pretty tough to do, and I was too big to fit in that space. Did you get it done? Yeah, I see why you couldn't do it. She sees why I couldn't do it. I don't know if you can hear what she's saying, but she's saying that she doesn't know how real sized human beings work on cars or buses because what did you say? Every time you do? Every, every time I'm working on something, it's like if I was any larger, I wouldn't fit. Oh, every time she's working on stuff, if she was any larger, she feels like she wouldn't fit. So I'm, well, I used to be literally double her weight and a full foot taller than her, but your old man Chuck's been losing some pounds around here because I've been working so much. I don't know. Um, let's go ahead. Okay, so I think we got some questions that I'll just put on because I like, I like hearing them talk and it's just, you know, a good, reliable source of, of chill <laughs> for me. Um, all right. What is the brand or model of camera system Brianna is installing? Do you know, Brianna? I think it's WeVision. She thinks it's WeVision. Um, it's cheap. It, it's relatively cheap, like, because the next step up is, like, over a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. Oh, here we go. I'll open this in a second. They're weaving. Oh. It's, like, the Chinese knockoff of a 360 camera, but it's, like, 160 bucks, and it's really nice. Um, and then the on-brand is, like, two grand. You got to say, say it loud, because I'm the one with the microphone. Hopefully you could hear what she's saying. Um... Did you hear about a few people that tried the floating subfloor, but the wood buckled? The thought was that the wood did not bond to the foam. Jeff, that is interesting, because there's been lots of speculation about things pertaining to the floating subfloor. Um, I would be curious to know a few things. What was the substrate, like the metal? Was it painted? If so, what was the prep and what was the paint used? Because the paint can pull off the metal pretty easily if you don't get that part right. Also, uh, when the plywood was put down, if you don't seal or paint the top of the plywood that's exposed to the atmosphere, you're going to get differential humidity going into the layers of the plies, and that can cause buckling too. Um, but that is good. It's, you know, that flooring method, like everybody's doing it, and it's not perfect. There is, you know, you have to, you have to be very specific about making sure that the glue can adhere to the metal and that the wood is captive and that the wood is sealed. Those are really important things that have to happen. So, uh, yeah, but that's good to know. I'm always curious to know more and hear what people's experiences are like. That's not something we've seen happen that much. So, um, here we go. Let's keep going here. Uh, I'm working on getting my own Amazon storefront going that's going to have different items that I use and enjoy categorized with little snippets about why I like it. So be patient. There will be links to that for, on ChuckCassidy.com eventually. What I need to do, if anyone can help me, I need to clone myself uh, and have one of me doing work on buses and the other one doing work on the Chuck Cassidy universe of websites and things. Um, Let's see, do, 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 do. would you recommend a bus or a box truck for a solo builder? I would rec, well, 
It, it really depends on what you're doing. I like buses because the steel body is really forgiving and easy to work with. Box trucks, um, they can be anything from fiberglass to aluminum to some, some steel, but uh, they're, the nice thing about a box truck is it's box shaped <laughs> and you don't have a curved ceiling to deal with. Uh, when I start my floor, do I screw through the plywood into the insulation into the metal floor? Uh, it depends on how thick you're doing. Like on mine, my insulation was four inches thick. I was just screwing my subfloor down into the thresholds that I put, you know, at the doors in the front and the back. Those are really the only screws that I used. Um, ever do spray foam? Do DIY spray foam? Gosh, you know, the job that you're looking at behind me was a DIY job that I did. Well, I did until Brianna kicked me out because it turns out she really likes doing spray foam. Uh, go figure. It's, it's way funner than spray painting. It painted expands. Um, so if you watch my video coming out this Sunday, you'll get to see what that process was like because that was the whole point of that video. Um, starting late, any chance you could get a video on the 360 cam you're installing? I am sorry, but it is too late for that. Uh, dual, let's see, only one wall on the bus is separate. Thinking a dual mini split on a 36 foot dog nose. A 36 foot dog nose probably only has like what, 31 feet of livable inside. So I don't know if you have to do a dual zone, if you can get good ventilation and circulate that air around. Uh, dual zones are a pain in the butt because they, ha they all run on 220 AC, which means a much more complicated electrical system. If you go Victron, it means you'll need two inverters. Um, is it realistic to find, everyone's giving me a super chat, so it drops me to the bottom of the chat, which is cool. I mean, I'm very grateful for them. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm back. I got it figured out. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Just got home and started watching. I'll have to go back and watch. Yeah, you got to go back and watch them again. How important is weight distribution and keeping water tanks on center line? Um, it's always something to shoot for, I would say. Oh, look. Hi. Hey, uh, Toby, you are to 1.5 to mud. No, I think it's on the, uh, ele the black electrical cart. Um, how important is, so it's great if you can keep the tanks on the center line. It's also great if you can keep the tanks like, you know, on the rear axle or where, somewhere thereabout. But uh, it depends also on the size of the bus. You know, a 40-foot bus is designed to hold, you know, somewhere around 80 passengers and figure 150 pounds per passenger. That's 12,000 pounds of humans. And a 100-gallon water tank only weighs 800 pounds. So in that context, it's not very much. The bus behind me was only meant to hold, what was the capacity on this? I think 14 or something, which, you know, 14 people is around you know, we're looking at like 2,500 pounds or something like that. And, you know, 800 pounds is suddenly a lot more important. So it depends on the bus. Uh, keep, the, keep the weight low, keep it centered, and keep it to the rear, if you can, is always usually a good idea. Um, how do you set up making a payment? I'm not totally sure how you set up this. If you're talking about super chat things, I'm not totally sure how to do that. I did it a long time ago, and now that I'm set up, it just kind of does it. You got to give YouTube your credit card info and stuff. Jeff, you did the AT540. Oh, hold on. I skipped someone. Troy, thank you for the 10 bucks. That was, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, it's, it really does mean a lot to get these little, little perks of cash because um, right now, YouTube, making the videos and doing the stuff on YouTube, it costs me more than I make off of YouTube, but it's how everyone knows about me and finds me, and it does bring me lots of other work, but my goal this year is to get to a point where the time and energy I'm putting into YouTube is breaking even, you know? And those, those things and the Patreon, they really help. I've got a Patreon if you wanna just give me a few bucks a month. It goes a long way. You get access to my Discord. It's really cool, and I appreciate that. And the whole probably schooly world of people who look for information that I put out, um, they appreciate it too because that's what makes this possible to be my actual job. And it's really cool that part of my job is teaching people all the stuff that I know or don't know. <laughs> uh, Robert, uh, oh, you're doing a matching five-buck thing. That's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Like, honestly, it's really cool. 
It's cool that I get to get paid to talk to you guys. Uh, what do I think I'll be doing in three years? John, good question, man. Um, I have goals. I don't know what I think I'll be doing, but my big goal is like next three years, uh, I'm going to hit the road for a little bit, make a bunch of money. Uh, I would love to get some property. Uh, I own a house in Denver, but I need a piece of property big enough to do the live work thing on, have a shop and a place to live on it. Somewhere beautiful, you know, and you know, it'd be cool to not do that alone, but you know, can't wait around, I guess. So, but who knows where I'll be in three years. I could be in India, you know, riding trains. Uh, Zachary Taylor. Oh, dude. Thank you uh, for the 10 bucks. Don't forget to plug your Patreon. I did. Um, I use matte heaters on exterior tanks to keep them from freezing. I do. Have I considered in-tank, submersible type, or other alternatives? I haven't really. Um, I don't see a problem with doing it that way. Really, if... What would sway me one direction or another would be what is easier to repair or replace, um, assuming that they're both equally reliable. And heaters, electric heaters, should be pretty reliable because it, it's just a resistor. So there's no, <laughs> no moving parts. Uh, all right, who, what do we got here? Um, boop. Oh, wow, we just, we just hit the bottom real quick there. Oh, I was almost there anyways. Should you paint both sides of the subfloor? Um, I don't see a reason to paint the underside. To me, the drawback is, is when you glue everything down, if you paint the underside, the strength of the bond between the glue and the plywood now has a layer of paint in between, so you're dependent on that paint being stuck to the plywood, and it probably would be adhered really well. Um, but I don't really see a reason to, to paint the bottom, and I wouldn't want to risk jeopardizing the strength of the wood to glue bond. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, no, uh, Nana's Nook, 20 bucks? What the heck? That is way too, I'm going to have to buy dinner tonight. Um, Brianna knows that I'm bringing this money in, and she's going to make me buy dinner again. Yeah, again for the second time. Uh, gotta feed us, we're just starving schoolie builders out here. Uh, just finished spray foam, looking to put in a dual mini split and a 36 foot dog nose. Oh yeah, so we, I was talking already about your thing. If it were me, uh, I don't know, I think if you got spray foam, if you are getting rid of some of the stock bus windows, if you have an awning, um, I would stick to a single zone uh, 12,000 BTU mini split, and I, I am pretty confident you'll be fine if you've got at least two inches of spray foam in there. That's going to be a good recipe, and if you want to really make sure it works, throw some fans in there to circulate your air around, but I don't think on a bus that length with that insulation, I don't think you need a dual zone. And yeah, window treatments is what Brianna said, so get some nice insulated curtains and an awning. Really, if you can keep the sun, because your solar panels, right, they'll keep the sun off your roof, and that's cool. And then if you can keep the sun off of an entire side of your bus, that makes a huge difference uh, in the amount of energy that your AC unit has to remove from your living space if the side of your bus isn't heating up. So, uh, would you be willing to recruit and mentor someone with little to no experience on builds? Here, oh God. Did I lose everyone? Is the stream protected? Is it? I don't know. Oh, I hope that we're back. Uh, brutal, you know, that's a freaking bummer. Uh, oh, no, we're back. We're back. I think we're back, and I think everything is good. I'm very hopeful. Um, do, 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 where was I? Oh, I was talking about like getting help. So, yeah. I would love to have have a mentor, you know, a mentee. I love teaching people. I think it's really fun, but uh, it's hard to get that setup going, you know. Um, spray foam in two weeks. Got electrical speaker wire and roof rack mounted. Are, are you missing anything? I don't know. <laughs> you want to make sure you have all of your, um, you know, all of your penetrations through the bus for things like clearance lights, all of that stuff figured out. Um, Framing, you want to have all of your framing done. 
What else? I mean, mask it really well. I don't know what you have in your rig, but you want to think about as much stuff as you possibly can beforehand. Bart, what's up, man? Good to see you here. Uh, what's the most important thing to consider when purchasing a bus? Um, the drivetrain condition and the fact that it has no rust, those are very important. Make sure you have an engine and transmission combo that will do the things you want it to do. Um, I am determined to make the Chuck Cassidy insulation system work in an Econo line. How do I make my furring strips not connect so much inner metal structure? Oh, contact so much inner metal structure. Uh, right, because you're going to be running it along the body panels. Well, you could make little spacers, you know, and space your furring strips off the metal body. You could certainly do that, um, but you're going to lose interior space. That's one of the drawbacks of a van frankly, is like it's not, it's not like framing the way a bus is. It's sheet metal, so anything you attach to that is going to be in full contact with it. Um, so, I don't know, like that's, that's a freaking, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, thanks for all the kind words, everybody. Uh, Tactical Turkey, uh, thank you for all your hard work. For every, uh, everyone who is looking on how to build a bus is very appreciative of, of your efforts. Cool. That's why I'm doing it, and that it's always great to hear. Um, what else do we got? Yeah, audio freeze. Yeah, things got a little bit frozen there. We're on a hot spot. We're in like the we're in the freaking woods up here. So, uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Whose bus is behind me? This is a bus, Bart, that uh, we did a. We did some stuff to, offered it for sale, someone bought it and then asked us if we'd do a rough-in, so we said we'd do a rough-in for them. That's what we're doing. Um, belongs to someone named Alex, and they're really excited about this. Already someone who's been living in a bus. Uh, DIYCore.com. I've already watched the video about condensation and the whole thing about bus windows, but I'm converting a 69 with parallelogram windows and don't want to lose them. What can I do? Uh, very cool. Uh, there's a company called Peninsula Glass who can make new parallelogram style windows. I've done that before on a 1962 Crown Inner City. And you can get them dual pane. You, there's a lot of options there. So check that out first. Otherwise, what really comes down to being the most important thing is making sure that the windows if you can, are air and water tight. If you can't, that they have some type of drainage for any leaks or condensation that get inside the windows to get out of the bus instead of going into your wall. If you can figure that out, you're in good shape. That's the biggest, that's the biggest deal. Um, did we have over 200 people watching this for a second? That's crazy. Uh, thoughts on Aqua Hot for the build? I mean, Aqua Hots are really cool. Um, they're also very expensive, but they give you a lot of great features. You've got the ability to preheat your diesel engine, the ability to broadcast. I'm trying to resume the, okay, am I back? I think I'm back. Um, they touch the hot water, the cold water, and then the engine coolant system. And then you have to plumb in all of your heat exchangers and heating loops that run throughout the bus. So it's a, it's a really big install process to make it happen. Um, but that being said, having heated floors, heat exchangers, hot water, and all that stuff done on diesel is really amazing, especially being able to preheat the engine too. So I don't know. Is there a reason not to use aluminum for framing? Um, really, aluminum is just, it's pretty expensive and uh, it's a little bit overkill. I think if I was gonna do framing, like this wood framing behind me and anything else, I would do something like out of PVC or something that's not wood that would be the route that I would take there. Um, are they gonna do another gutted? I don't know. Uh, I think m they might, but it's hard to say. That's not my, uh, that's not my forte. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was fun. If you're curious about gutted, it's uh, this shirt. It was a five day build contest between three teams. I was on the bus team. I was captain of the bus team, but really the bus team was full of a lot of legends and whatever, it was funny to be captain. And we competed against two other teams. One was converting a van, one was converting an old RV. We were doing a bus, we had five days, and um, you know, at the end of five days, we were judged. <laughs> and Bart, Bart, Bart Berg, who um, just gave, did you, Bart, did you just give me freaking 50 bucks, man? Didn't you just, didn't you just rebuild your transmission, dude? 
Bart was on our team. He was the sixth member who was like behind the scenes supporting us. Um, full video freeze. I'm back. Stalled for 20 seconds. I'm back. Uh, if there were any questions about what I said, let me know because I don't know what you're seeing or not seeing. We're doing our best out here. <laughs> oh, oh, Bart, you gave me 50 bucks to make sure that I had to buy dinner tonight. Did you hear that? Nice. I like Bart. Yeah, Brianna says she likes Bart. Also, I, my what? Phone hotspot is there if you need it. Oh, she, Brianna also gave me her phone hotspot in case the, we have, if we have one more problem, I'll do that. Uh, can I do a special sometime on various transmissions? Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. Get the old whiteboard out and cover all of the all of the topics about transmissions. There's a lot of information out there, um, and transmissions are frankly a very important part of the equation. You know, um, a school with no windows isn't that a yellow submarine? Good point. You know, but when I th when that, I, that's got to be a Beatles reference. But you know, when I think about a yellow submarine on the album, did that have windows on it? Because, you know, submarines don't usually have windows. You know, like in real life. Let's research submarines have windows. Anyone ever see Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou? Great movie. I'm a Wes Anderson fan. Um, what do we got? Oh, I'm getting a little bit parched. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know this isn't easy to answer, this is from Savvy. Savvy hit me with five bucks to make sure I see your question and answer it. Good strategy. Um, would you consider 2,000 US dollars to be a normal amount to pay for a pro doing spray foam in a 20 foot bus? Yeah, actually. Um, my bus was 27 feet long, but the interior space was 19 feet from the driver's seat, the back of the driver's seat to the back wall of the bus. And the price to have it sprayed, but not trimmed, and I did all the masking, was right around 1900 bucks. So I would think that from what you just said, that would be a pretty reasonable amount. Um, keeping in mind, like the bus that is spray phone behind me, this is a, it's a five window bus. And that means we've got about 14 feet from the back of the driver's seat to the back wall. And we sprayed it ourselves, but just the price of materials, we bought, we bought two kits. We ended up using one and a half, which is about $1,100 worth of, almost $1,200 worth of spray foam. Plus, uh, I don't know, we were in here spraying and trimming all together. Total number of hours between the two of us worked probably around 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours total to do that job. Um, so that's like a, that's a fair bit of money, you know, and if we could have hired a professional to come in and do that, uh, for two grand, it would have been cheaper, you know? So I think that's a normal amount. I also will say that commercial spray foam, um, it's nice because they know what they're doing. If you're a DIYer, unless you watch my video coming out on Sunday, there's a lot you can mess up and it's a bummer when you do mess it up because the consequences can be a real pain in the butt to fix. A pro is way less likely to have those issues. And if they do, it's on them to fix it. Um, and while the product installed is the same, it's a two component polyurethane closed cell foam, the equipment that the pros use, the guns, it sprays it out at a much higher PSI so it atomizes better. And you do get a little bit of better coverage and the foam is a little harder, it's a little more dense, which can be both good and bad. Like it sucks when you're trimming it, but it's nice, you know, once it's in the wall. So I hope that answers your question. I think 2K is a fair price. It's also a great place to spend your money. Insulation, especially if you ever go to sell your bus, being able to say that it was insulated with spray foam is really going to make it attractive to prospective buyers. And those reasons alone, I think, make it worthwhile. Um... Thanks for all the, yeah, generosity tonight. It is crazy. Everyone's being way too freaking nice. And I really appreciate that. It makes, it makes these Thursday lives all the better, you know? Um, rust turns to dust. That's right. And we all do turn to dust. So in a way, there's a lot of, 
Rust is more than just a thing. It's like a metaphor and it's a representation of life and the fact that like all of these things will eventually decay to nothing, just like you and I, you know? What a relief. Uh, she's back there working hard. Love it. Yeah, she is. Working real hard. Um, all right. What else do we got? Clicking like now. Yeah, smash that like button, as they say. I'm going to scroll. And, and smash that subscribe button on Wolf Dog Buses. That's Brianna's channel. Um, any of my mods who are listening and have the ability to drop a link to that in there, do it. That'd be cool. If not, uh, there's links in some videos that her and I did together. Or just type it in the search engine on YouTube. Did you know the second most visited and most used search engine in the world is the search feature on YouTube? Not, yeah, Google and YouTube. Um, you demand, Jug, what are your thoughts on doing a full pass-through under storage if you have the space? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, pass-through pass -through storage is amazing because you get eight feet of depth and you're basically just doubling your, your, your floor space. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, where can we get PVC for interior build out? Well, I don't know. I haven't done a ton of research into it. I've bought PVC, quote unquote, you know, wood or whatever, planks, and I've used it for exterior trim because it doesn't rot and it doesn't require paint. And I would probably use something like that. The, the thing about the PVC, it is, it's floppy, you know, it's not nearly as rigid as wood. So if you're going to do that, Try to figure out a way to make it so that, you know, if you're using that for your strapping, it's not all wavy, you know, in between the ribs. Because I really think it could get wavy and get kind of out of control. Um, so take a look there. Uh, whoop. Nice. Here we go. You should do your own version of gutted on your buses after you insulate them. <laughs> That's like what we're getting close to doing, actually. If all goes to plan... Well, I don't want to spoil it all, but if all goes to plan, you know, May and June, we're going to have a bunch of people up here working on projects, and it's going to be pretty freaking busy. I'll try my best to document it, but there will be a lot happening. Uh, puppy airtime, wolf dog. Yeah. Yeah, there she is. Do you see her just hanging out, supervising? Seems like there's always a dog in every shop I'm in, and it's just freaking awesome. Uh, Kiara is a pretty legendary dog. Troy, get the pup a bone. I love dogs. Ten bucks. I guess, I guess that's going to you, Kiara. Yeah. Some turkey necks or whatever. What do you want? She does. That dog eats way better than I do. And she, she's the only dog I know that gets to pick her food. Brianna will put out several different options. Everything from shrimp to chicken to some really expensive dog food, some steak, uh, what else? Oh, sardines, Kansas sardines. Sets it all out. And then Kiara picks which one she wants to eat. And we've been trying to figure out if Kiara understands what she's doing. And it really seems like she does. Like some days she knows what she wants and she just goes for it. She's been on a cat food kick lately, which is weird. It's also weird that Brianna feeds her wolf dog cat food. But, but that's what Kiara likes. And what Kiara likes, she gets. On a more basic transmission question, any place you recommend to reprogram the TCU for sixth gear? Oh yeah, I got a whole nother video. I got a, I've already filmed this video because if you remember, we bought these buses at auction that have the sixth gear, but it's locked. And uh, in this video, I show you how to remove the TCU, ship it to a gentleman named Charlie Ball, who will reprogram it for you and mail it back to you. It's 400 bucks. And uh, he's done a lot of them, and it works. And it's way easier, in my opinion, than asking to Thomas or Bluebird for permission and then paying an Allison dealer to do it because a lot of times those Allison dealers are going to charge you, like I, the last person I heard of who did it, it was like 600 bucks to just to take it into the dealership. And all they're doing is hooking a computer up to it and like, you know, playing Pokemon on it. Uh, will two... I got to remember to edit that video, Brianna. Jeez. The one about the transmission. Will two 15-pound propane tanks, yep, work for water heater and three-burner stove? Oh, yeah, all day long. 
Can you steel man the argument against spray foam? You like spray foam, but what are the best arguments against it? Oh, that is a winner. That is a that is a good question. I can, I'm going to give Brianna a mic. Brianna has grilled the crap out of me on spray foam, and she is she she'll do spray foam. Like that's what she's probably going to do in her own rig. But she makes me have to take the position of defending spray foam constantly. Even though we both decided it was the best choice for this bus, I caught myself having to defend spray foam all the freaking time. Mm. I'm going to grab a mic for Brianna. Are they wired up? Can you turn them on? Here's a microphone. Let's see if... Um... Is, is this microphone working? Everyone Hello? will have to uh, say in the comments section uh, if you can hear Brianna talking. Brianna, give, give us. Hello. Kiara? Did you say it? Where's it clipped on? Okay. Right here. Can if you, you can me? hear Brianna, let us know. Um, this is fun. Spray foam. Spray foam, Brianna. So spray foam has this uh, huge issue because it can allow water to pass through it, um, no matter what kind of closed cell you get. Um, it's not waterproof, so very it, small amounts of water. It absorbs water. Yeah, and but, so if you have the least of any insulation out there, probably. Okay. We'll see. I'll have to do some googling before I admit to that. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but so because water can absorb into it like a very dense sponge. Um, if you have a roof leak, that water is going to come in and it's going to kind of spread around a little bit because um, it takes a bit for water to go into spray foam. And you're going to have a hard time finding those leaks, um, which all buses will leak. Give it like three years and your bus will leak because there are seams, there are, there's caulk, and nothing lasts forever. So um, spray foam. <laughs> nothing lasts forever. Makes that super difficult when it happened. I don't know where to look. I'm looking at you or the camera. You can look at whoever you want. I have yeah. some video thing. Yeah. Um, so when it comes time to finding leaks, it's a huge headache. However, you don't get better um, R value and you don't get better structural stability and um, vapor barrier. Vapor barrier. So I would say bring your bus to Pacific Northwest, let it rain on it for three <laughs> months straight. Make sure you have all leaks <laughs> taken care of and then spray foam. Otherwise, you're in a world of hurt. Yeah, and everything she said is stuff that I have to agree with. I still, no insulation system is perfect, but I still will choose spray foam right now of all of the options out there because of all the advantages it does offer. But the deal with leaks is a real deal, and you really have to make sure that your roof patches and things like these marker lights and stuff. Let, let me show you. Yeah, all. and only use beetle tape. Yeah, for our all favorite things on the roof. So we got, you know, there's a camera. We got the clearance lights. We got these lights. Um, the only sealant that Brianna and I feel like is 100% reliable is butyl rubber tape. Which do we have any sealant? Sure, I got some. It's basically it's like chewing gum. And what's cool about it is that it never dries out. It'll be gummy 50 years from now, and I know that because I've had. Well, not 50-year-old, but I've had 40-year-old RVs that have gummy butyl still on them, and it's still keeping it watertight. Now, it's not the prettiest stuff in the world, but that's a really good sealant. And you have to make sure that your bus is watertight, no matter what insulation system you use. Um, there was I got to try to find it, but there was a post not long ago in Schooly Planet about this family who'd been living in their bus, and they used wool for insulation. And it did just what I always was afraid it might do and had always suspected wool would do is that, you know, Havelock, they claim that their wool can absorb moisture and manage moisture. But if you are living in there with a family of people in a confined space and you don't have a vapor barrier, every day or every night, you're going to get condensation going into your walls. And if it can't dry out during the day, it's going to build up to the point where your insulation becomes saturated, one of Brianna's <laughs> favorite words, and then it's going to start to rot and mold. And they had a post about how, because of that, their bus is now ruined. They have to tear their whole build out because their walls are filled with mold. And that, to me, 
you know, people are worried about off-gassing and things from spray foam, and I understand those concerns, but mold is like guaranteed bad, no matter what. And the off-gassing thing... It mainly happens in the first like 24 hours. Yeah, and like honestly, if you do it correctly, it shouldn't ever happen. Our lives are already filled with polyurethane foam and finish. Like we're surrounded by it already. And if you're worried about this, which is gonna be behind your walls, don't ever look into what most cushions and things are made out of because polyurethane is like the backbone of plastics, adhesives, all types of foam. We're, we're swimming in it. If you have a hard time choosing between uh, mold and VOCs, just Google toxic mold syndrome. Oh, it's, it's bad. Thing in the RV community. Here's some beetle tape. It comes in all colors. It's silly putty. Gum it's does silly dry putty. Out. Let silly me. Silly putty doesn't. So, so this stuff. This is beetle tape. Look at this. It's like it's like chewing gum. You know, it always just always sticky. And it's always going to be like that. It never, it never changes. The only roof hatches on school buses that don't leak are the ones that use the beetle tape. Yeah. Check it out. I don't have a link, but if you Google or Amazon search butyl b u t y l. Uh, it's going to turn up. This is what we use when we install windows, uh, roof patches. You should also tell them that then like on top of the eyelids of the lights and cameras and all yeah. of the clearance lights, um, GeoCell. Yeah, we use, on this bus, we use clear GeoCell. They have it in clear, black, white, and I think gray. GeoCell is a great sealant. Cicaflex is also a good sealant, but lately we've been noticing that it has a tendency to shrink and crack in the GeoCell. The GeoCell will do that, but to a lesser degree, and it seems to be a better option, and it's available in clear, which is cool. Um, oh my god, the time is flying, y'all. <clears throat> I'm going to go for another maybe 10 minutes or so, and then uh, I've got to get out of here. i got a phone call with my friends Kels and Jay, and if you don't know Kels and Jay, Google them or YouTube them. They're amazing builders, good friends of mine, and they were also on our gutted bus build team, Kels and Jay. Check it out. Um, here we go. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Scared of big purchases and foam is one of them. Yeah, foam is totally one of them. But uh, it's one that is like, to me, a great place to spend your money. Oh, are you joining? Yeah, work's over. Work is over, I guess. Task list is done. Would I need, uh, I want my schoolie to outlive me. That's the Chuck Cassie build style. <laughs> Yeah, which is cool because it means the older you get, the crappier your builds can be to still meet that standard. You know, like the builds I'm going to be doing when I'm 80, they're going to be pretty crappy. Insulation. You're going to be in an RV. Who cares? I'll, be, I'll just buy an RV. <laughs> Will we even have RVs in 50 years? Would I need a CDL to drive an unconverted bus back home? Sorry for the noob question. Well, legally speaking, if it's over 26,000 pounds or has air brakes, you do. Um, I, even when I had a CDL, I have never had an issue where not having a CDL or where a cop asked for a CDL has come up. Um, and I've driven tons of buses across many states for a really long time and never had that issue. I'm not saying you should break the law, but I think if you have insurance, people really, the cops really want to make sure you have insurance and that the bus isn't stolen. If you can prove those two things and then you're just a nice person, they're probably going to let you off, especially if you say, hey, I'm taking this home to convert it to a schoolie. What, what do you think? Um, all states have different laws. And um, like Washington, it's if you're driving 16 passengers or more, you need a CDL. Mm -hmm. so anything to do with air brakes. Um, but as soon as you sign the title, it is now privately owned or personally owned, not commercially owned. Um, and so that will make a difference in some states. But yeah, just be nice to cops. Your and best, don't speed on your way home. Don't speed. Also, I've had great luck calling the state patrol of whatever state I'm in if I want to know that. They're happy to answer those questions. Like they're, The state patrol's job is to make sure people follow the law. And if you call them being like, hey, how can I follow the law? I've never had them be like, well, we're not going to tell you. Like They will tell you what you need to do to be compliant in that state. And that is just way better than asking people on the internet, even myself included. Because the only state I'm really an expert at is Colorado, because that's where I'm from, and that's where my whole bus life has really happened, and all my vehicles are registered there. So get it from the horse's mouth. Bart, thank you for posting a link to Brianna's channel. Look at that. Nice. I've got great mods. Uh, would I need, uh, Brianna need to make more videos. She's awesome. 
That's what Steve is saying. I filmed one two days ago. She keeps filming videos, but then she gets cold feet about posting them. Yeah. You gotta edit them. That's the hard part. I made a cool one about uh, a day in the life of Charlie and I. And it uh, took Who's Charlie? Chuck and I. (laughs) (laughs) And it took a wild twist. We ended up on a 10-hour drive for our work day. Yeah, not many days you wake up thinking you're going to work on a bus all day and then has it end with you on a 10-hour drive. I don't, maybe pick up a rig? I don't want to <laughs> give it away. Um, <laughs> rigid equals good, floppy equals bad. Agreed. Um, here we go. We got lots of people chiming in here with info, and that's really cool. When are, Steve is asking, when, are you, when will we see your amazing bus again? Almost finished with it? No, Steve, I haven't done anything with it. I've been living in it here and honestly working on everybody else's projects. Me and Brianna lament the fact more and more every day that we never get to work on our projects. May is supposed to be for us, and it's now already. Yeah, May was supposed to be for us, and now it's gone. Um, but there will be, Brianna's going out of town, which means I will be left unsupervised, and I will be allowed to work on my own bus. That's right. She's going to let me pull the bus in and work on it for like a week. Yeah, we gone yeah. for seven days. Seven days. Uh, I'm going to drink a lot of coffee. And I'm going to try and get my bathroom done. So get my shower pan in, get it tiled, get my gray water tank mounted. And that'll be a huge turning point for me because right now I'm basically tent camping in my bus. It's nice, but, you know, it's primitive. And then that will put me in a place where I'm ready. Hopefully later on this spring, I'm going to be joined up here with a couple of other talented builders who are going to help me on my bus. And my plan right now is to unveil my finished bus at the bus fair in Oak Ridge, Oregon. Finished? Well, is it ever finished? But it'll be really close. (laughs) Close enough for hopefully people to think it's done-ish. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, nice. I can say that 1,500 rivets isn't even close enough rivets for a 39-foot roof raise. Good to know. That's good information. I really never kept track that much of the rivets we used because we just had a big bucket of them. Um, oh, the double row topside rivets. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh, if you're doing that topside thing, yeah, that's a million. Um, oh, crown and around. So Brad, a uh, very talented builder, he's saying PVC siding and plastic expands a lot in all caps, and that's something I don't really know about. I found that out the hard way. Oh, you found that out? Yeah. And you I didn't used, tell me? Uh, well, I don't know. You never asked. Well, we were talking about using it for the strapping. Oh, plastic lumber. That's different. Plastic lumber can be made of a ton of different compounds and different percentages of each. And they all have different flexibilities and expansions. Um, But I know that the, like, FRP boards that people will use on showers or the lower half of walls, that needs a quarter inch perimeter to expand and contract. That's insane. Yeah. Oh! What do we got? Okay. We're going to do a couple more things, and then then we're going to do it. Where are we? I have no idea where I am in this live. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I think I'm way behind, so I'm going to have to fly through this. Um, here we go. Good to know. Okay, then a bunch of yeses. Thank you all for being here. Did you fast in PVC so it can move and expand? We haven't done it yet, Brad. Um, in dealings with the MT-643 upgrades from AT-545, do you have to re-angle the engine trans? No, no, no. You do not have to do any of that. You just have to shorten the drive shaft by two and three quarter inches. Um, your pinion angles and stuff are all the same. Uh, how long until the foam leaking starts to cause problems, even if it does happen? I mean, like, it, it, might, ne- it might never be a problem, depending on the frequency of the leak. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. Or it could be a problem within, like, a few days, you know? I don't know how long it takes mold to grow. But if you yeah. notice it, fix it. And then you're good to go. <laughs> Take a panel off, let it dry out. Um, but don't leave your rig oh, yeah. in the winter all season. That'll be a problem. Also, um, so I had a bus that it had a leak where the windows were leaking into it. They kept the stock windows, but did spray foam. And it was leaking for a long time, like many, many months. And one of the cool things about spray foam is that spray foam is not an organic material. And so mold really has a tendency not to grow on the foam, but the mold did grow on the backside of the plywood wall panels and it grew on the wood framing. 
So when that brought, bus was brought in, we got rid of the school bus windows, put in RV windows and pulled the wall panels off. And what was cool is that the foam and stuff had no mold on it. Um, we did treat everything with mold killer and all of that stuff, but we were able to remove the wall panels. We sanded off the face of the strapping and put new stuff on and we were good to go. And I don't know, you know, if that had been wool or fiberglass or something like that, I don't know. Probably not fiberglass, that's not organic, but and I the, just wonder. The mold usually grows in the wood. Yeah. That absorbs like a sponge. And so then can it was kind of cool because it, it meant that the repair was not super bad for us. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> um, the four, okay, here we go. Oh, so many questions. It's moving so fast. All three drive shafts have been balanced. Okay, that's good. Um, for those that aren't doing spray foam, was it best to put it between the ribs and wood strapping? If you really wanted to, you could, no, butyl rubber is not going to be the choice. Like if you really wanted to do it right, what I would do is I would cut blocks out of a really high density XPS foam. So like foamular that we use in the subfloors, but I would find something like 250 or higher. Mm. And you could cut little blocks of that and have it go rib block of foam, and then screw your plywood on top of that. And that would give you a kick-ass thermal break. Um, but I would want to find that block in something like half inch or three quarter thickness. Otherwise, you're going to really be adding a lot of thickness to your walls if you're doing, you know, an inch and a half thick piece. Uh, Jeff Brecky, setting up a Victron system design with me in a few weeks. Thanks. You're giving me money and then telling me that you're going to pay me money. That is my kind of fan. That is cool. Nice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> kill mat type material to reduce thermal bridging. It can, uh, but keep in mind, kill mat is just a sheet of aluminum with butyl rubber on it. So you're going to get a slight reduction, but um, it's really a function of the delta temperature between the, uh, the material that you have, like the metal of the ribs and what's happening on the other side. That will tell you if that's enough to get you the results you want to eliminate the thermal bridging. And usually, you, there's no replacement for something that is thick and a good conductive insulator. And kill mat and other sound deadening and radiant type barriers are generally speaking lousy conductive barriers or conductive insulators. Whereas foam is really, really kick ass at insulating okay. conduction. So the kill mat stuff usually has like a tin foil on one side. Right. And it does act like more of a conductor, um, even though it's rubber. Uh, Noiko is more of a foam and does better at um, th using it as a thermal break, but you could not put that between like metal, Noiko, and then wood and screw it in because it would compress. I like your right. That's the that's the thing. Formular stuff is good. The the ultimate thing is like you're screwing that together, and so you're gonna you're gonna squash it. So if you're doing like sound deadening or anything like that, it's just gonna squeeze that rubber down, and you're gonna have very little thickness of something that isn't really meant to insulate that way anyways, Yeah, I would say. Whereas if you use foam, especially a high density XPS foam, it shouldn't compress. And then you have stopped the thermal bridge there. If you really wanted to go the extra mile, you could frame out everything like we have in there and then do, um, before you do your plywood sheets, you could actually put up like a layer of half inch foam board sheets and then do your plywood so that your interior wall plywood has no thermal connection to any structural part of the bus at all. And that would be, that would be really <clears throat> impressive. Question, Chuck. What? Why don't we use three quarter inch formular instead of plywood for the first layer of strapping? That's a good question. <clears throat> and I don't have an answer for you because that's something that I want to do. The main, the main thing that I really want to change or the main thing about that that would keep me from changing is that that means that your strapping is only three quarters of an inch thick, like on the spans. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would just want to make sure that if we spray foam, that we don't let it get wavy. Then why don't we do half inch and one inch? Half inch foam, one inch plywood. One inch plywood. Yeah. I don't want to carry it. I'm not going to carry it. But. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll experiment with that because it would be cool to keep refining the system. I've definitely thought a lot about it, you know. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right. I'm going to scroll down a bit here and then I got I to gotta hurry up and get out of here. Um, 
GeoCell is tougher to finish. Yeah, it's not as easy to tool, but if you get your fingers wet with um, soapy water, you can tool it pretty well, in my experience. Uh, what have you found to clean the old tape up when you reseal the RV windows? Ugh, mineral spirits and elbow grease. I mean, there's not a much else you can really remove butyl tape with. Chewing gum is also a great sealant. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I asked about five months ago on a live about doing kingpins and you couldn't offer much. Saw your kingpin video. How do you feel about it now? Well, the, the main reason I couldn't offer much then is that the kingpin job is going to vary vehicle to vehicle. And on an, a big old bus like mine, it's really easy. Uh, it, and it can really change depending on the bus and the the next biggest variable is, are the old kingpins stuck and seized in position? Because if you go on the internet and you look up kingpin changing, you know, job removal instructions, anything like that, people will give you horror stories about having to drill out the hardened steel kingpins, cut them out with oxacetylene torches. Um, like there's, <clears throat> it could get really nasty in there. So that would be my biggest concern. Um, but the job itself, it's really like once you get in there, it's a pretty straightforward job. You're just replacing a big metal pin and the bushings around it, and that's it. But getting to it is a real pain in the butt. Uh, if you've never, if you're not comfortable doing heavy duty mechanicing work, that's not the job to start with, uh, I'm afraid. I would maybe work my way up to that job, replacing other parts of the bus, seeing your comfort level, buying the tools you need, because you do want to make sure you have a big jack and an impact gun, all that stuff. So, I think everyone should learn how to do their own maintenance, but honestly, <clears throat> and Brianna can vouch for me, I was shopping around to have other shops do the kingpin job for me. Yeah. Like, I was not going to do that myself, and it wasn't until I found out that all this other crap needed to be fixed that I realized I couldn't afford it unless I did it myself, and I have a good rapport and history with Robin, and he came out and helped me, and I really do prefer to do the work myself, but... Yeah, Robin um, seems like a guru. Robin is a guru. Thanks. He's reached some level of enlightenment, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I really like to do it myself. But just sometimes it's like pay to get it done, know it's done right. And then I found out I had to do all this other stuff. Um, all right, I'm going to answer a few more questions. And then I owe you my Tool Du Jour version 2. 222 people watching? I think that might be a freaking record. Is this yeah. what happens if I do it regularly? Then <laughs> people show up. Let's do a 24 hour live. We'll yeah. Do, I'm, well, I'm not I'm, working for 24 hours. I'm considering taking a page out of Joe and Emily's uh, playbook. If you check them out on YouTube, it's Joe and Emma Lee, E M M A L E E. Uh, they're, doing, they're rebuilding from scratch their Toyota motorhome after attempting to save it and then realizing it was too far gone. And my good friends, Kels and Jay, actually went out and they helped them rebuild the frame. Um, and Kels and Jay are hopefully going to be coming up here. Uh, they did a live stream that was 24 hours long and they had fun things like challenges where, you know, Joe had to like, he could, he wasn't allowed to pee and he had to drink. It was like he had to drink a Red Bull like every 45 minutes for like a few hours, which you would like. Um, yeah, off Red Bulls. Oh, it, oh, you're off Red Bulls. Mom. My rule was every time Joe walked into the RV, he had to exclaim, they don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fun. Um, here we go. Uh, um, Brianna's a rock star. When I decided to take on a bus project, I used her video to get feedback on if it was a good idea or not. I got fantastic feedback from everyone except the wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That is funny. Um, uh, she is competing with you. You are toast. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, um, mold can grow in as little harder. as two to three weeks in the right worst conditions. Yeah. What do you recommend using to seal a roof in, in a subtropical area? I mean, everything, nothing is perfect, honestly. Tears. Tears, yeah. Um, I've had, my current favorite is an acrylic, um, it's an acrylic elastomeric roof paint made by Dicor. Ooh. That's what I did on my bus. I like the acrylic over the silicone based because the silicone based stuff, nothing else will stick to it if you ever need to seal around it. And it has this incredible ability to attract dirt so it never looks clean. I like the acrylic because it actually gives you like a hard surface, but hopefully it doesn't crack, but it's meant specifically for the roofs of metal RVs. I'm very hopeful. Why haven't you told me about this? Well, 
I felt like I didn't have to tell you about it because I made a whole YouTube video about it that someone didn't watch. You had an attention span. She makes me teach her stuff that I've already made YouTube videos about, you know? Mm. That is rude. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, tool du jour. Okay, it's time to get there. It's time to get there. Tool du jour. Uncle Chuck. Oh, Sundance Bus. What's up? Sundance Bus was an award-winning bus from last year's bus fair. I don't think you guys are going to be there this year, and it makes me really sad because I really liked hanging out with you. Uh, Chris, and I can't remember your wife's name, but she has good taste in music. I know that much. Oh, you're going to be there? And you're going to party? Oh, my God. So cool. Uh, they had the same, almost the same exact bus as me with a roof raise, but they did an overcab bed for their uh, little girl to sleep in. And uh, different engine, I think. I don't know. I but love he, the overcab beds. Yeah, the overcab beds are cool, and they have, like, round windows and stuff. You would like that bus. I would like that. Uh, and they're cool. You would like the, the people are cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay. Oh, we got was a bus. That's Brian, who was looking for a bus. Oh, nice. I got, like, so many friends. This is, like, the coolest thing ever. Who's looking for a bus? I'm Who's looking for a bus? There. We got buses for sale. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for a 30-foot mid-sized bus that doesn't have wheel humps it's got air ride does it have air ride it no no air ride it's got auto chains it. the seat is air it's got an air ride seat but it's the cummins 5.9 uh 24 valve it's got the allison the at545 which in the 30 foot bus is not a big deal it's not a big bummer to me it doesn't overheat it's so small and it yeah it, it doesn't overheat the transmission and the flat front front engine bluebirds have a large transmission cooler. Excuse me, this cider is getting me. They have a large transmission cooler built into them that is far bigger than the ones like on my bus, which are an international chassis. International skimped on the radiator and transmission coolers on those buses, and it's a major bummer, and I hate that. And it's a real detriment if you have a AT545. The flat front Bluebirds have a much bigger uh, radiator, and they have a much bigger transmission cooling uh, cap capability. So I've never seen the AT545 overheat in a flat front front engine Bluebird, but I have seen it overheat in a dog nose built on like an international chassis. So the bus is sweet. It was actually, I bought it to be my bus. Um, yeah. The only reason that I jumped shipped is because I found a four by four bus, which yeah, is which, a rare bird. Rare bird. Um, She's into the winter sports. Yeah. So if you're anywhere where you're going to be driving with snow, having on spot chains is like a lifesaver because. Um, if you're driving up mountain passes, you don't put chains on once it's already snowy. You put chains on at the bottom of the mountain where it's yeah. raining and people are driving by you and just spraying you with water. Well, that's in Washington. In Colorado, we have this thing where in the wintertime it only snows. Yeah. So but if you're in the Pacific Northwest. On-spot <laughs> chains are cool. They're, they're like 7000 bucks to install on-spot chains. Yeah, and so when the bus already has it, you just flick a switch and then a little windmill of chains comes down yeah, and automatically really deploys cool. and you can just keep driving. You just keep driving and it it's legally amazing. it legally meets the uh, regulations like when they have a chain lawn effect you can use those chains and you're good. They're super rad. Um, <clears throat> so many questions. Everyone's got to run. We got to run. Uh, do I get Dicor from Amazon. Yeah you do. Oh three cans were open. Well that sucks Deb. I'm sorry. Um, it's Amazon Return. It's Amazon Return them, yeah. Uh, so if you want one of those, if you want that bus, hit me up. It's info at chuckcassidy.com. It's Brianna's bus. We're trying to make room for all the projects that we've got. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to lighten my load on the property. <laughs> and since uh, Chuck's been here, I think I've doubled the amount of vehicles here. So <sighs> we need to get rid subject. of some so that Kelsey and Jay can fit. And yeah. The other friends can fit, all the builders. We need room. <laughs> yeah. Also, you found another bus that you're interested in more. So it's time to go. It might be true. Uh, does Bree do roof raises? No, she doesn't. She's never done one, but we're going to teach her how to do a roof raise uh, on this bus over here. I'm super pumped. And a floor drop? Maybe doing a floor drop, but it's, it's that bluebird there we're going to do a roof raise on. I don't know if I really should document it. I've already documented how to do a roof raise, but... Um, you know, I'm better at making videos now, so maybe I'll document. film it as a, hey, we're doing this rather than a how-to. Yeah, maybe I won't try to teach you. I'll just do it. Um, so, Josh, I hope that answers your question. Thanks for the five bucks, by the way. I should probably give that to Brianna. Any plans on coming to the East Coast? Not really. I'm sorry. Um, but that sounds like, you know, giving out free food to communities in need sounds awesome. 
Um, you can always consult with me. Uh, how's my bus? It's not in the shop. I'm living in it, but it's not done. Uh, what kind of support do I offer for my consulting on Patreon? Uh, Brittany, good question. You can go to ChuckCassidy.com. You can book one hour and half hour consults with me. Or if you want, you can join Schooly Support. It's 250 bucks a month, but you get unlimited access to me. So it's expensive. On my regular Patreons, where it's like five, 10 bucks a month, there's just a Discord channel that you can get access to. It's like a chat room, but full of people who really care about building their bus the best way possible. And I try to chime in there when I can. I'm really busy. I don't get in there a bunch, but everyone in there is really smart and gives great advice. So I don't need to like be in there babysitting, honestly. I think a lot of these people have probably spent more time problem solving certain aspects than I have because that's what you can do when this is your hobby and like, <laughs> You know, you don't have to be like trying to make a living off that of it. That chat room is full of some meaty conversations. Meaty, convert, girthy, some would say. <laughs> girthy. <laughs> Cider, what brand? What the hell am I drinking? This is just from the Mercantile. This is from, this is Excelsior. They have Or no, brews. Schilling. I yeah. Brianna's drinking wine. This is almost empty. Um, what? Anyway, just realizing how many men's names are also tools names. Chuck, Jack, Bob, Mike, Axel, Brad. Oh, yeah. A Chuck, <laughs> a Jack, a Bob. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty. Well, you know, it's a man's world, isn't it? Jeez. You guys are all just tools. We're all, <laughs> men are just tools. Honestly, <laughs> biggest tools. Uh, the Patreon is amazing. Steve is, you, Steve, thank you for repping that Patreon. It's really cool. People in there are awesome. Um, Beth, I did get your info on that commercial Kurt Hitch. My frame is actually a little wider than 34 inches, so I'm going to have to figure something out to make that work. And the way my back bumper mounts, it would get in the way. But thank you for sending me that info. I really, it looks like if it would fit, I would bolt it on. Uh, she's talking about this uh, trailer hitch that ripped off of my bus in the last video or two videos ago, and I'm trying to figure out a new hitch option. I think I'm going to have to make something. Um, the hitch seemed fine. It was the Chinese yen bolts. It, yeah, the I think the bolts. Well, the bolts were the problem, and that hitch design uh, <laughs> really relied on the bolts being good, which it seems like they weren't. I wonder if you could just simply weld on um, some plates. plates. Yeah, perpendicular so that it bolts. We're gonna make it better. Um, who? What else do we got? How do you like? Well, there's a little thumbs up next to the video. Smash that button. Hit it with your finger. Um, I'm gonna do the last tool. The the last tool du, du jour. What is it? Where is it? Where did they put my? Where did you put the Legos? Oh, they're right there. Oh, good. Okay. That's what it is. Shh. Love these. These have transformed our lives. You sold me on these in like 37 seconds. 37 seconds. So here we go. When you're doing wiring a bus, there are times like one of the ways that I wire switches for lights in a bus. They're 12 volts. So I will come into the switch box where all the wires are. I'll have a home run that brings in the power. And then I'll have a few different light circuits, you know, with a few different switches. And when I come into that box, that wire is usually like a 14 gauge. It might even be a 12 gauge if I got a lot of lights in there. And then the, the wires that feed everything else, they might be a lot smaller. They might be a 16 or an 18 gauge. And the problem is that I have to take my power coming in and distribute it to each of the switches that feed the light circuits. And a lot of times you'll have a situation where you have to like splice your power onto like three, four other wires. And there's no elegant way to do that, especially when you're changing the gauge or the size of the wire that you're splicing. Um, <clears throat> we typically, when we're doing this type of work, I like to use heat shrink uh, and crimp style connectors and that's really great but there aren't a lot of options in that world for joining and splicing things together you know it's usually butt connectors or ring terminals there's piggybacks that do three ways there are piggybacks um, but when we're doing these types of operations inside switch boxes and outlet boxes the heat shrink in my view is not that important um, because it's something we can get to. We know that it should be staying dry, right? And condensation and moisture shouldn't be an issue. And the other issue that we have is that we want the ability to connect multiple wires to the same block at a time. That is where 
<clears throat> these devices really shine. And what these are, they are lever style clamp connectors. And what they let you do, say you've got your wires coming in here, <clears throat> and let's say this is my main power coming into my switch box, and I've got four other lighting circuits, you know, that I need to power off of this power coming in. This is a Wago. W-A-G-O. Lego my Wago. Lego my Wago. And what it is in a normal house, and these are fully UL compliant, you know, in Europe, go figure, they've been using these things for freaking decades way now. Ahead of us. They're way ahead of us. We're sitting here using wire nuts. Wire nuts suck. I'm yeah. just going to say it. Like, screw them. Dude, they come loose in houses. My, my house almost burnt down from a Look at that. wire nut. So what you do is you flip these levers up here, okay? And what these levers do is they release tension on a spring that is inside this holder. And so this one right here, it is, oops, oh, I dropped it. It's able to hold, it's able to take five, splice five wires together. And the gauge size here, what are we? 24 down to 12. So you can use 24 gauge wire, which is super tiny, way smaller than you'll ever see on a bus, all the way down to 12, which is honestly probably way thicker than you'd ever need on a lighting circuit. But it's cool because all those gauges will connect here. And because it uses a spring to maintain tension, not a crimp, not a screw, it can never vibrate loose. So this is a connection that's really solid. The only drawback to this is that it's not watertight. So don't use it in your ceilings. So don't use it, don't put it in something that's encased in spray foam. You know, don't put it somewhere where it's gonna be subject to moisture and you're gonna have great results. So what you do, you know, you strip back your wire and then all you do is you stick it in, you know, one of the five slots here and then you push the lever down and that is on there. I mean, like I'm pulling, let's just see if, what it takes the to pull it The way that it's angled when you pull it to get tighter. I don't know if I can. I'm pulling real hard. And I'm not, I'm not holding the clamp down. Okay, so that's a lot of force, honestly. <laughs> I don't know if a butt, a butt splice could even hold up to that. So you stick that in there, and then what I can do, you know, I got my power coming in, and now I've got four slots open where I can connect my power to all of my lighting circuits. And they make these in a bunch of different flavors. This one is a five slot. They make a three slot one here. I've got a two. And then they also make one that's like an end-to-end -end for butt splicing. And these are amazing for that application. And another thing that I really like is if you change your mind and you got to redo something, all you do is you flip the lever up and you can remove the wire. No problem. They're, so they're reusable. I, I bring these with me when I go to pick up a vehicle because it's a great way to jerry-rig stuff. It lets you work with a multitude of wire sizes. And they have these for different ranges of wire size too. This is just a size that I like because it's compatible with the, the wires that I use 90% of the time for circuits. And yeah, they're vibration proof, they're UL rated, and as long as you don't need that waterproofing, they're a really kick-ass option. So check them out. They're all over the internet. They also work with Romex, so yeah, they work your with house working. Yeah, and... yeah. I I literally do not use wire nuts anymore, even at home, because of these. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Amazing. Really love them, and they're really cheap. That's the two two one series. So I don't know what the numbers mean, but two two one, uh, it gets you that twenty four to twelve gauge range, and uh, they have all those different models. So check them out. I hope that really helps you because we love them. We're They're sold. great for like intermittent work too. Like since your bus isn't completely oh, finished yeah. yet, oh. you can sit there and tie together all the outlets before you put the outlets yeah. in. Like right now my toilet, my vent fan, like all this stuff that's temporarily wired up, I use the wire nuts, or the not the wire nuts, the <laughs> Wagos. <laughs> because when it's time to do the real thing, I can just remove them. I don't have to cut anything. I'm not losing any wire length. So mm -hmm. um, you can get them at Home Depot. There you go. Check them out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and log off, but thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. I'm going to try and do this again next Thursday. It means the world to me and probably to Brianna that you tuned in. And check out her channel if you haven't. It's Wolf Dog Buses. We're doing a lot of work together for the next couple months, and it's going to be interesting. Otherwise, we're going to see you next time. And uh, my name's Chuck Cassidy. Thank you for tuning in. Who are you? Uh, I'm Brianna. She's Brianna. <laughs> see you later.